have you ever had that strange urge to take a pile of lead, do some transmutational chicanery and then suddenly have a pile of solid gold instead? Well, yeah, if that sounds absolutely amazing, that's alchemy guys. Sounds pretty awesome, right? But as we all know, you'd need the Philosopher's Stone for that level of alchemical power and that's a highly sought after artifact. You see, whilst the ancient philosophical traditions of this proto-science have captivated the vast and expansive imagination of our civilization since the early days of esoteric thought, giving light to some of the most enlightening works of art and literature ever created, alchemy as an actual accredited scientific method is pretty wishy-washy best, but what if they were onto something? What if alchemy was real? Let's find out. Hello internet, what's going on? I want to get welcome back to the most inquisitive channel on YouTube, life's biggest questions. As per usual, I'll be your disembodied floating voice Jack Finches today. We curiously asked the question, what if alchemy was real? Roll the clip. Are you a ghost? No. No. I'm alive. But I'm an alchemist and therefore immortal. For the curious amongst you, of course, that clip was from 2018's Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald, depicting one of the most famous posthumous alchemists of all time, the legendary Nicholas Flamel, genuine immortal and holder of the coveted Philosopher's Stone, because yes, in the wizarding world, alchemy is certainly very much real, but to us mere muggles, unfortunately, that isn't the case. You see, it sticks on a pretty important point. For centuries, alchemy has been heralded as one of the most mysterious lost arts, particularly in fiction, but the truth of the matter is the mysticism of alchemy is pretty much ingrained throughout. Even when the most prolific of alchemists were in full swing, they'd still note their workings out in the most mysterious of manners. So there's no wonder it's had the impact that it has on the wild imaginations of we human beings. To address this question first and foremost though, we should make one thing incredibly clear. When we ask the question of alchemy being real, what we're really asking is what would our civilization be like if we could transmute base metals into no metals, what if we could turn lead into gold, because the truth is alchemy as a whole is real, and it has formed some of the most important discoveries in science before we had chance to even realize it. You see, it's easy for us to look back at the ancient world and think that we were so much smarter than they were, but that really isn't the case. Ancient alchemists were most often complete and utter geniuses, so for us to give credit to their discoveries, we should probably take a little dive into their history. Alchemy, a term from the Arabic alchemia, meaning to fuse or cast a metal, were the ancient branches of natural philosophy, philosophical and proto-scientific traditions that were practiced throughout Europe, Africa and Asia, and thought to have originated in Greco-Roman Egypt in the first few centuries. Its aims, although they were myriad, were primarily an attempt to purify, mature and perfect certain materials, cryosopeia, the transmutation of base metals such as lead, to the noble metals, particularly gold, in the creation of an elixir of immortality. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll get to that one in a moment. You see, it's difficult to pin down because alchemy encompasses several philosophical traditions that span over four millennia and three continents. Throughout history, these have spread out into three distinct yet vaguely similar schools, Chinese alchemy, Indian alchemy, and Western alchemy, perhaps the most prolific of the three, and certainly the most widely recorded. You see, the truth is Chinese and Indian alchemy were widely referred to through religious iconography and oral traditions, passed down through through metaphors and allegories, which kind of makes things a little difficult to tie down. Western alchemy, although it certainly has had its fair share of metaphorical dissemination, as it passed from Egypt to Rome to the Islamic world and then back towards medieval Europe, makes up the bulk of our understanding of the great and mysterious history of alchemy. You see, it is widely believed that the dawn of Western alchemy was associated with the dawn of metallurgy, extending back to a point roughly around 3500 BC, and as the technologies of separating metals from their ore advanced, so too did alchemy and the proto-science of understanding the rare and wonderful properties of the physical world. All of this though paled in comparison to the ultimate goal of alchemy, the great work, the magnum opus, which is literally where we get the Latin phrasing from. The process of working on the primer materia in order to create the Philosopher's Stone, and this is where the veracity of alchemy kind of falls flat on its face. Of course, as we know, you cannot transmute metals together by strictly passing them through four phases of chemical processes and then suddenly have the key to immortality. But hold that thought. 
Because what if they were onto something? You see, since the dawn of the scientific methods with genius minds such as Ibn al Haytham and Roger Bacon, as well as the later enlightenment of the 17th century and the establishment of modern science, the continued practice and study of alchemy has been widely forgotten. Throughout much of the 20th century, the academic community had no time for the scrawlings of an ancient practice, and their patience with alchemists in their vain efforts to transmute base metals into gold was like an adult smiling at a child building a fort out of pillows. But that was before something pretty remarkable happened. In the 1980s, some revisionist scholars began arguing that alchemists had actually made significant contributions to the development of science. It's just that it wasn't easy to discover the true extent of it. You see, alchemists were obsessed with secrecy, and they deliberately described their experiments in metaphorical terms, with bizarre and intricate references to mythology and history. For instance, one text describes a cold dragon who creeps in and out of caves. In hindsight, this was the discovery of saltpeter or potassium nitrate, a crystalline substance found on cave walls that is cool on the tongue. Pretty interesting, right? Well, a few decades down the line, it got one particular science historian thinking, a man named Lawrence Principe of John Hopkins University, who wondered what other intrigues were hidden in the lost art of alchemy. After cobbling together obscure texts and scraps of information from a 17th century laboratory notebook, Principe managed to produce a long lost recipe to grow what is known as a philosopher's tree from a seed of gold, supposedly thought to be a precursor to the magnum opus itself, the Philosopher's Stone. As it would seem to alchemists, the process of using gold to make more gold would have been entirely logical to them, and so Principe figured it wouldn't hurt to try it out. Following the recipe, he mixed a specially prepared mixture of mercury and gold, boiled it down into a buttery lump at the bottom of a chemical flask, and then buried it sealed in a heated sand bath. To his complete and utter astonishment, several days later, he unearthed the flask to find that it was filled with a glittering and fully formed tree of gold. You see, the mixture of metals had grown upward into a structure resembling coral or the branching canopy of a tree. The Philosopher's Tree. Amazing, but as it seemed, this wasn't a new idea at all. It was a process based upon another loosely known alchemical practice, an experiment known as the Tree of Diana, in which the gold was replaced for crystallized silver. Now, it is thought that Diana's tree was used by Sir Isaac Newton himself in some of his experiments, and yet here in the scrawlings of a long lost laboratory notebook was another far more elusive version, yet one that was based upon very clear and evident findings. It begs the question what other wonders of alchemy have been lost to the sands of time? What other scientific anomalies had already been unearthed by these ancient proto-scientists? What secrets lie undiscovered in these long lost laboratory notebooks? You see, alchemy very much is real. It paved the way for a far more clinical approach to furthering the technological understanding of our civilization. A light bulb, a bright spark that occurred at the dawn of the scientific revolution. But the fact that we have often discounted the mysteries of this ancient practice as a farcical fantasy poses a far more interesting question. What else have we forgotten? You see, it is human nature to endlessly advance the species forward, pushing for new boundaries and furthering our understanding of the natural world. After all, science was born from alchemy. Maybe in doing so, we have already discovered the Philosopher's Stone, and yet we haven't even realized it. Like some transmutation of one type of civilization to the next, like turning lead into gold. Well, there we have it, our long and short answer to the question, what if alchemy is real? It is, or it was. We've still got a lot left to learn. <laughs> what do you guys think? Do you agree with our assessment? Disagree? Have any more to add on the matter? Then let us know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Before we depart from today's video, though, let's first take a quick look at some of your more creative comments from over the past few days. Andrew Paul says, Jack? Andrew? Um, I'm a little bit worried now. So yeah, unfortunately, on that note, that's all we've got time for in today's video. Just stick around all the way until the end. If you were a fan of this video, or just like the biggest questions in general, then please be a dear and hit that thumbs up button, as well as that subscribe bell, and I'll be seeing you in the next one. As per usual, I've been your disembodied flowing voice, Jack Finch. You've been watching life's biggest questions, and until next time.